Uh, it feels so great to have coffee in the trailer again. It's been a long time. I, I've been kind of chomping at the bit wanting to get back into this trailer, but it's been away. It was at Trillium Manufacturing uh, getting some modifications done. And that was my, my last video, as a matter of fact, was up in the air where uh, the trailer was brought in. It was like several weeks in queue and then finally a week of uh, construction and modifications. Glad that's over because now I can do the stuff I want to do. That was only step one of the modifications, but now the screwdriver is in my hands, so now I can do the rest. I'm really excited about it, but before I go there, I want to show you exactly where I left off in the last video because in up in the air, Everything was up in the air. The trailer was literally lifted up and down because I got a new frame. But there are other things they did as well, and that's what this video is about. Putting my trailer through 5,000 miles of rough conditions gave me a better perspective on what I needed to pursue this type of travel. On the last video, I left off with the Outback being prepped up for the new mods, and one of them was to eliminate water issues. Although the side door was convenient, it wasn't essential. Now one of my concerns with moisture and condensation is in this side door here. After seeing the new Outbacks no longer included these, I decided to follow suit and have it removed. The door and hardware, as well as the stinky slinky compartment on the right, were taken out and new fiberglass pieces inserted, formed and finished. Once sealed up, the damage was fixed, new material added, and a new fiberglass poured over the top. This was done on both rear corners, including where the water heater and vent once were, but I had previously removed. While I missed most of the renos, one important thing to note is that a leak test was performed using a seal tech machine, which proved my trailer is now leak free. It's time for the great reveal! I hardly recognized it, looking like it just came out of a showroom. My dirty Jeep was embarrassed. Here it is. Looks pretty cool, huh? Clay brown on the bottom. A nice earthy color that matched the roads and trails I traveled. So rather than curse the dirt, I thought I'd compliment it. Well, I think everybody knows it's not going to stay that clean, but it does look nice. And I think once I mud it up again, that brown in the bottom is going to blend in a little better. So, uh, yeah, it's going to get dirty. I'm kind of proud of that. It's not for a display case. It's for using out in the real world. But the color also shows where I added a thick layer of gravel guard, a coarse textured coating that protects the fiberglass from rocks and abrasions. Now one thing I'm really going to appreciate is that extra space I have between the wheel well and the tire. There's about four inches there. With the old axle, which was starting to give, the trailer just kept creaking down, down, down until 
the wheel was actually, when it was bumpy, touching the front. I'm not going to have that problem anymore. First of all, I know that all torsion axles degrade over time. However, this one, it adjusts. Anytime I want, I can just jack it up and bring it up and get some additional height if I need it. Or if for some reason I want it lower, I can bring it down. I didn't have that option with the original axle. But the axle was only part of the equation. Good tires as well. Lots more groove, a lot thicker, a lot tougher. And remember that side compartment in the back? After the cover-up, you'd never know it used to be there. And as for that rock damage in the front, let's just pretend it never even happened. Now, along with the tough aluminum frame, I also had a couple more pieces here and on the other side. Uh, and, and these are just basically for accessories. Like, for example, with my ladder behind here, I can, it holds the ladder in place. I can still just slide it up if I want to. But the other thing I was thinking is with this here, I can actually put a solid piece right across here and use this area for additional storage. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do it, but that's why I had it do it. It's a, this is just something that will give me a little more options as to where I put things, especially if they don't need to be inside the trailer. Along with a special coating on the aluminum frame, any steel components that were in contact with it were isolated using galvanic corrosion protection barriers. Now this tongue box it's not something I actually really thought I needed. Um, I'd seen it out there in their other models, but I wasn't sure if it was going to work for me. But now that I see it on the trailer and the benefits, I, I'm glad I had it put on. I mean, it's just four rubber latches, a handle, and off it comes. And I've got one propane tank now. I don't need two, so I've just got it down to one. And that gives me all this back area for batteries if I want, storage or other things. And even with that compartment at the bottom used, I still have enough room for tools. I can actually have two of these uh, cloth toolboxes so that I have stuff uh, like my chalks or anything else I might need for outside the trailer. It's really good storage. Uh, it protects the propane tank. Um, and it also protects the body of the trailer as well because, and this is rock guarded, so it's protected, but and it just looks so cool. And to top it off, a new jack with a vertical crank, instead of the awkward horizontal one. Much better for your knuckles. But I don't care as much about looks as I do performance. I think it's a lot tougher than it was before, and should weather whatever I throw at it. Well, there's at least two questions that I expect people are going to ask. And the first one is, how much did it cost? And the second one is, why didn't you just buy new in the first place? So let's address the first one. How much did it cost? Well, guess what? I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to go into the dollars and cents because that's going to vary. There's really no basis. But what I had in mind is a fixed budget. You know, I sort of worked what I thought I could afford. And when it was all said and done, I actually went... 50% over my budget, which is okay because there are some things I did not know when I started. You know, that whole issue with the rod in the corners, until it was ripped open, I wasn't sure. And I also decided to add extra things. So yeah, I went over my budget because I got more. And the biggest expense, I don't think is a surprise, is switching to an aluminum frame. However, 
my option and what I originally thought what I was going to do was to take that steel frame and get it refinished. But when you look at how much labor is needed for that, especially the labor, to do it properly, and I'm not talking about some guy doing it in the back of his garage in his spare time kind of deal. Uh, the way to do it properly is you have to lift the body off the frame so you have full access to that frame. You've got to grind it down, you've got to prepare it, and you've got to put whatever coating. Um, and, and, and nobody could really agree what the best coating was, but that is just as expensive. As a matter of fact, I think switching to the aluminum probably would have been about the same price as if I had worked on the old frame. But I think aluminum has a lot more advantages over time, especially on the way that I travel. Uh, but I also, yeah, I, I paid more money because I didn't know what I needed when I went in. But I also got new ideas when it was at Trillium and uh, decided to go full all around rock guard on the outside. That was the second biggest expense. Like, hey, you know, it's up there. Why not do a few things? And that's typically what happens when you budget for something. It's never less. I don't know anybody that's budgeted and it actually, oh, well, gee, I only paid half. How did that happen? It doesn't happen. Anyway, as far as buying new versus used, well, I was in a spot. My old trailer was no longer roadworthy. I couldn't use it without there being a safety issue. And because it was of a design that you couldn't just lift off the body, it would have been a huge hassle to even try to repair that frame. And what would be the point? It was time to move on. I was actually going to buy new. However, and, and, and especially with customized trailers, there's a catch to that, a big catch. And that is you're typically going to be in queue. I could not be without a trailer for six months to a year. I needed a trailer now. And when I got the opportunity to buy one news, I took it. I just wish I knew then what I know now about, you know, the little things that I missed when I originally looked at that trailer. But you know what? I just, I, I have more knowledge. I feel better. I think I can give better advice to other people because, uh, yeah, a lot of things happened that I didn't expect to. But all in all, I'm happy with it. I think, uh, I think this trailer is gonna perform well with the way I travel. And I'm just, I'm just itching to get out there. And the other thing about new is, um, and, and I think actually the way it worked out, I got better than new because there's a lot of things that are above and beyond what you normally expect from a customized uh, trailer manufacturer. But also, what I wouldn't be able to do if I got new, or at least be, I would be inhibited. If you got brand sparkling new trailer, you know, it's all gleaming and glistening and it's got the perfect sur surface and it's got the warranty. You'd probably not do this to it. Because I might use, I could take some chances. And it advanced my experience with the trailer and it gave me ideas on how to improve it. So in my particular case, used is probably the best but now that it's half new that's even better but putting cost and my own impatience aside yeah i like it although i still have work to do it won't be long until i hit the pavement once again on a new adventure i hope you'll join me as i continue to try new ideas and explore new horizons